Boker Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And guys, I want to go right back to RT's report. We started with this yesterday, John Kirby's statement that it was definitely a threat to Russia. Now, I had some people saying that it was taken out of context. And of course, all the Russians are in Russian media have recognized, like RT, that <clears throat> his words are a threat to Russia. Now, I, I agree and I understand it is an indirect threat, what John Kirby is saying. And I want to play again the clip that they're showing here at the beginning. And I want to express what my point is in yesterday's broadcast. Let's listen yeah. here. Extremist <clears throat> groups will continue to exploit uh, the, the vacuums that are there in Syria to expand their operations, uh, which will include, no, no question, uh, attacks against... Uh, Russian interests, perhaps even Russian cities, um, and uh, Russia will continue to send troops home uh, in body bags here at the State Department, uh, Secretary. Now, just that clip alone, again, John Kirby is stating that the extremist groups are the ones that would do attacks on Russian and Russian interest. The issue that we brought out in yesterday's broadcast is showing who is the one that is arming and supplying all the means that the extremist groups need. And that clearly is the U.S. and some of their allies. And maybe not all of their allies, but some of their allies are the ones doing it. And then we show in the broadcast immediately after this threat comes out, that is a indirect, so I will make that more clearer. It is an indirect threat then we see that these extremist groups end up with grad launchers, 122 millimeter grad launchers that are being used on the Syrian army. But it's also what John Kirby states, Russian troops will continue to go home in body bags. That lets you know that John Kirby knows that there are Russian troops being killed and sent home in body bags. What Russian troops is he speaking about other than what was not reported by the Russian media? So I have to say the facts there as well. I don't, you guys have to understand, I'm not here for bias one side or the other. I'm here to find out what the truth is. And Russian media has failed to report that when Americans struck the Syrian army over there in Del El Zor in eastern Syria, they also killed, besides the 62 Syrians, they killed about a dozen Russian forces in that strike, as well as Iranian special forces, too. A total of about 90 people were killed in that attack. Russia, though, was steadily warning uh, the U.S. allies that you are striking the wrong target, but yet the bombing goes on for more than an hour. Our point is, though, is that, yes, the U.S. was backing ISIS. It is so obvious it's not even funny. How can you be told? How can you be contacted during this bombing that's going on, and yet the bombing continues for well over, or it's not well over, but a little bit over an hour on several different areas? And then now the Syrian army is saying they have the radio intercepts which I have not heard, so I cannot verify that that is true, but they're saying that they have the radio intercepts where the U.S.-led coalition was directing the movement of the ISIS troops there in this region. But then again, Russia doesn't want to report that they lost soldiers in that attack, neither does America want to report the fact that Russia used cruise missiles that killed Intel, CIA, Mossad, Turkish, Saudis, and Qatari uh, Secret Service officials there in Aleppo who were directing this whole operation. But this is why that we see John Kirby is making this indirect threat. Why? It is a proxy war. I've said this all along. It is a proxy war. Russia and the United States are really at war. They are at war with one another. It's just Russia is using the Syrian army and the U.S. is using all the different thugs that they can bring in to get to fight against the Syrian army, including some of the Syrian people because they're, they're dying for money in America, according, again, this is according to the UN special uh, uh, envoys that went there, or excuse me, they, weren't, they were peacekeepers, uh, U.S. American peacekeepers that went to Syria that did an investigation with both the, the rebel forces and the Syrian government only to find out that America is being fed the biggest propaganda you could ever imagine. 
And I don't know if I have that here on the top here. Let me just see real quick if I have any of the videos there right at hand. One okay. moment. Right here. What Alfred said. Listen to what he says. This is Henry, uh, Dr. Henry. Uh, uh, I forget Henry's last name. That has demonized the Syrian government, demonized its leaders. A, an effort that precedes every other intervention that the United States has made over the course of many, many decades in order to convince people that it's okay for quote-unquote humanitarian reasons to overthrow a government and to replace it with whatever. The United States prefers uh, a government that is not independent, that is a willing uh, participant. You see that guy there? Whatever he is a journalist that is not happy. So what we saw in, in Damascus and what we saw in the two villages we visited outside Damascus belies the propaganda that has um, overwhelmed us. It's hard, it, it, it's hard for even those of us who have been in the peace movement for a long time. It's hard for us to ignore this propaganda. It is so uh, well orchestrated. Well orchestrated. All right, now that's Dr. Henry. Uh, um, let me see if I can see Henry's name on the video here real quick for you. What else? What Alfred said... He's speaking about Alfred so Martyr, and Dr. Henry, uh, um, I think it's Winnendorf, if, is what I think his last name is. They were the part of the delegation that went to Syria, met with both opposition and uh, the, the Syrian government, only to find out that the American media is being totally lied to. And now they're handing over our media to, the, to uh, some... United Nations group or something like this is going to shut down all the alternative media. Why? Because they don't want you to know the truth. This is why, and I'll say it now, so if you get to see this video today, we're looking at all kinds of alternative means to get the information to you. Even if they shut down the internet, we're looking at doing a call-in line. I had several of you sent us in that information that you can do a call-in line where we'll speak, where you can actually be able to call in and listen to the broadcast. We're going to be getting into that immediately, find out. We do have a ham radio. We will get that up and going uh, and get the license to be able to run that as well. We, will, um, we are also looking at doing a DVD that would come out, say, monthly or bi-monthly. You know, email us or write us and let us know your address. Maybe even email would help there. Uh, perhaps they can't just shut out all the emails. So that's another possibility that we could email you a video link that you can play back uh, in your own computer. That's another possibility where we can do this. But we need your help in doing that, even financially. I've got to come up with the ways to be able to create a way to get this information to you guys. Now, uh, again, I'll have links in there. We've created other accounts. Uh, Danoon Institute for, uh, for the teaching side of our ministry, we have a new YouTube page specifically for that. Hopefully that way we can keep at least the teaching, but news I know is important, especially from a prophetic, prophetic perspective. Uh, there's a lot of other things breaking, but I want to bring this out to show you that John Kirby, yes, it is indirectly. He is saying that it is the, the ones that will fill the vacuum are these uh, radical rebels and, and, and different opposition groups that are in Syria, but they are backed by the U.S., that's our whole point. And the point in the broadcast yesterday is who is selling all the phosphoric uh, chemical weapons all around Syria to the Turks and to the Saudis who are also involved in this war in Syria? It's the United States and some of their allies, mainly the United States, and they have admitted that they've sold it. But yet they demonize Russia and Assad for using all these chemical weapons or barrel bombs or whatever you want to call them. And we're finding out more and more evidence that keeps coming out that shows that this is a lie. In fact, I listened to the rest of Aaron Erdem's uh, speech to the, uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the parliament in Turkey. It is a shocker. And we will be bringing more of that out if we're able to. Um, let me share with you some other things that are breaking right now. Turkey suspends 1,500 prison personnel guards, pulls a plug on 20 radio and TV channels. This is something that's just breaking, and this is what we're about to face in America. Turkey's already doing it. Turkey is becoming a nothing but a dictatorship of a state 
that's going on. Also, 338 killed in eastern Aleppo in the past few weeks. 846 have been injured. 261 children, guys. 106 children were killed in this. And I realize that Russian bombing is also causing this, no doubt, as well. But what they're doing, and this is why that you see that Alfred Martyr and Dr. Uh, Henry here uh, have stated in there, it is a well-orchestrated campaign to demonize the Syrian government. They are using these opposition forces and, and just turning a blind eye. I don't say that the U.S. is telling them to do it, but they're turning a blind eye while they attack civilians and kill these children as well. But then they, they photograph it and blame it on Russia and Syria. But again, I don't say that Syria and Russia doesn't drop bombs and it doesn't cause death as well. I do, I realize that. I wish the whole war would stop, period. But you know what? And I will tell you something. The only one that went in there and that really had a heavy hand in dealing with ISIS was Russia. But it angered Obama so badly that he began to bring all of his ships, all of his military over here to get involved in it. Little by little, he's been doing it. And that's biblical prophecy, guys. That's what God says in there, that, that he would get so angry that he would bring all of it back over. Shows he was there before. Yes, in Iraq. I'll do deeper into that if I can, as soon as I can. Also, the Pope of Rome, what is he doing? Embarks on a peace mission to the Caucasus. He's going to Azerbaijan, Georgia, all these things, Armenia, trying to show peace, 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 when there is no peace. Didn't Jesus say they would cry peace and safety and there is none? Well, that's their leader right there. There's your king of the north running around saying peace, and he ain't got no peace. Ah. <sighs> Also, Beijing warns outside Japan's against playing with fire and messing in the South China Sea because Japan's going right along with the U.S., trying to show that there's no big deal. You know, the, let, me, let me say this to the Japanese as well. I've got family that lives in Japan. That's where my dad spent most of his life is in Japan. I've got, I've got two sisters and a brother that live in Japan as well. You know, and I happen to love these people because they're my own people as well. And, but I have to say, I would not be sitting there sucking up so much to America. Don't forget, it was America that did nuke our country. Now, again, though, I understand, too, that Japan went and destroyed Pearl Harbor. But you know, there was evidence that shows that the U.S. government knew that was coming. I, I can't help but wonder sometimes. It's too much for my own brain to even comprehend all of it. You know, but the thing was, was the U.S. had Japan at the point really willing to surrender without ever using a single nuke. That was my issue. Why do we have to drop a nuclear bomb on innocent civilians? The U.S. was doing an incredible job at bringing Japan to its knees with its own military targets that it was striking. And Japan was willing to surrender. They wanted to do it on conditions. They wanted to have a little dignity in their surrender. But America wouldn't accept it. So they dropped not one, two nuclear bombs. On people, it's just like Americans. You know, we don't support, many of us don't support the Obama regime. We don't support it. But the thing is, is we're still Americans. We're all in the same boat. And no matter what Obama does, the rest of the world looks at it as, a, you know, what happens if, you know, Russia nukes our country and kills our civilians? People that never sided with Obama, that never wanted the policies that he's doing to stir up the entire world into nothing but a hornet's nest. It's the same with Japan. How many of these Japanese never wanted Pearl Harbor attacked, would have never been a part of it, but somebody in the American government decided, let's see how the nuclear bomb really works. They're human beings just like we are. We're all human beings on this earth. So sad. Another serious uh, news breaking as well, Sputnik, Washington's ultimate goal is to make Bosnia-Herzegovina a Sharia nation? This is what's happening in America. This is what's happening in Europe. This is what's happening in Sweden. But listen what happens here. Washington is doing its best to turn Bosnia-Herzegovina into a Sharia state. Emil Vlaiki, a professor from the University of Banja Luka and the former vice president of the Republic of, of Srpska, told Sputnik. In an interview with Sputnik, Emil Vlaika, Vlaiki, excuse me, a professor from the University of uh, Banja Luka, the former vice president of the Republic of Sperska, said that the United States is doing the best it can to instigate Sharia law in Bosnia-Herzegovina. 
The interview came after Washington's harshly condemned last Sunday's a referendum by the Republica, Republica Saparska, one of two entities comprising Bosnia and Herzegovina as per the Dayton Peace Accords to declare a national holiday in defiance of a ruling by the Bosnian Constitution Court. Commenting on this, Blaiki said that America and its Western allies suffered several diplomatic defeats at Russian hands, such as in Syria, and now it wants to recoup itself in the Balkans, punishing the Republic of Sparska's president, Miloroda Dodika, Dodik, for the referendum. This scenario, Bosnia Herzegovina, is simple and it can be considered in the context of the new Cold War, Vlaiki said, citing the simple reasons he believed that prompted the Bosnian Constitution Court to stage a provocation against the Republic of Sperska. Notably, all this absolutely not connected with whether the January 9th Republic of Sperska Day is celebrated or not, he explained. Vlaiki recalled that it is the Republic of Sparska, led by the President uh, Dodik, which rep, pre, excuse me, prevents Bosnia-Herzegovina from joining NATO. So it is safe to assume that the Bosnian Constitution Court just implements task order from the outside seeking to remove President Dodik from politics, which in turn paves the way for Bosnia-Herzegovina joining NATO, he said. This is why it is not surprising that the West does not react to the Belakois rhetoric and Barkir Itzbigovic, the Bosniak member of the uh, Tripart Triparty presidency of Bosnia-Herzegovina, who pledged that Dodik will share the fate of Muhammad Gaddafi, Muhammad Gaddafi and Saddam Hussein, according to Vlajik. He said that this is apart from Washington's efforts to tell uh, uh, Sar Sarajevo how to deal with the Republic of The White House seems to be adding to Islamization of the Balkans. I mean, America just can't keep their nose out of nothing. And even the Hungarian president is a major risk right now because he kicked out the Rothschilds. Now the prime minister of the nation of Hungary is starting to turn against the president himself. Why? Because there are leading Catholics involved in there. And there's nothing against Catholic people, but there are Catholics in there and the government there that are going to overthrow the Hungarian president so that they can keep it part of the European Union and put the Rothschilds back in charge. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Sure.